Okay, so um, this is the Envisioning Community Dreams Workshop. I'm your host, Ernestine Lyons. And uh, today's agenda, we are essentially going to revisit the Martin Luther King, um, I Have a Dream speech, and then explore the concept of dreamlining. And, you know, if, if you're not familiar with dreamlining, we're going to get right into that. And we're going to explain those concepts. Um, and then the third thing on our agenda item today is the workshop and having a community discussion around um, Martin Luther King's dream and the dreams that we want for our own communities um, in the Metro Detroit area and beyond. So, and then the fourth thing on our agenda is setting intentions for fighting for a just world in 2021. I know that, you know, we have had some things happen um, at, the, at the onset of this new year that have posted, uh, they, they have sort of posed a lot of, you know, conversations around the fact that America needs to have a deep introspective look inwards to really do a lot of self-assessment. So um, moving right along, um, this is going to be a very informal conversation. So feel free to interject, ask questions. And, you know, since it's, since it's just us, you know, we can definitely make it very informal. Oh, and we have someone else joining us here. All right. Hello and welcome to our newcomer. So I just explained and once you're, you're hooked up to audio and visuals, um, I'm gonna get into more of the presentation here. Welcome and thank you for coming to the Envisioning Community Dreams Workshop. Okay, so um, just an introduction. My name is Ernestine Lyons. Um, I am you know, I was born and raised in the Metro Detroit area. I've lived in Harper Woods for about 25 years. Um, and, you know, I am a councilwoman in the city of Harper Woods, but I also consider myself to be, you know, someone who is, you know, just really active in, you know, economic development and community involvement and having com conversations around what it means to, you know, keep pushing. And I love personal and professional development, which is why, you know, we've decided to, you know, join the idea of the Martin Luther King, um, I have a dream speech with the concept of dreamlining, um, which is something that, you know, the author Tim Ferriss in his book, The Four Hour Work Week, which is a personal and professional development book that we'll get into, it really explains what this concept is a little further. So um, the goal of our session is to, to turn chaos into clarity. And I use that term intentionally because it's something that in one of Martin Luther King's last books before he died, he talked about, you know, the chaos that, you know, civil unrest brings and then the clarity that comes out of those efforts towards, you know, really achieving racial parity. And so um, we, we want to have open and honest conversations around how we can make our, you know, so, social justice dreams a reality for, for a more inclusive future. So. Um, we can also do an introduction of everyone in the room um, now that we do have a few more folks. And yeah, uh, who wants to start off? I can go ahead and start, Ernestine. Hi, my name is Veronica. I'm on Harperwood City Council, and I've been on council since I was appointed in January of 2015, uh, elected later that year. and. Um, um, thankfully, we were elected last November of actually of 2019. So, thanks. Okay, and we have Beverly or Earl. Do you, you want to, who wants to go first? Okay, okay Beverly. Beverly, I'm here. I'm on the I'm on the telephone. I, you know what? I could try to get on Zoom, but uh, right now I am on my cell phone. No worries, no worries. Um, because it's it's a it's a lot of conversation. Um, I do have visuals here, but if you know, I'm really just talking through them, and they're just serving as a guide to keep us, you know, on pace for you know staying on topic with the agenda. So um, well, I didn't want to miss in case you had any visuals to display. I didn't want to miss that. So I might come out of this telephone and and uh, come in on Zoom. Awesome, uh, awesome. If that works for you, yeah. go ahead. 
or I mean, that, that's okay. Let, let me just say that I, I am uh, Beverly Kendall Walker, mm-hmm. uh, Executive Director of Friends of Detroit City Airport, and we've done some partnership with um, Harper Woods for the uh, Juneteenth celebrations and uh, things like that. Your previous mayor would come and celebrate with us uh, on um, several events regarding the Tuskegee Airmen, and certainly your current mayor, my sister, uh, will continue those relationships as we try to you know, walk through and go through um, various injustices that uh, continue to happen in spite of the dream. So that's what I'm, that's who I am in a nutshell. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for that introduction. And we have Earl DeShazer. Can you hear us? Okay, um, well, if, if you're feeling a little camera shy, um, then what we'll do is, um, you know, just kind of uh, go ahead and move on into the next um, topic and exploring our concepts here. So, you know, this is, this is the beginning of the Martin Luther King Day speech. And, you know, he talks about, you know, back in 1963, you know, having this, you know, vision for of of laying out what America's past was and what its future is, and so you know, just going to go ahead and read. Um, you know, it's five score years ago, a great American in whose symbolic shadow we stand today signed the Emancipation Proclamation, and um, you know, this momentous decree came as a great beacon of hope to the millions of Negro slaves who had been um, seared in the flames of withering injustice. And it came as a joyous daybreak to the long night of their captivity. So this is, you know, just a, a, a harken back to slavery and its end and, you know, how people felt joy in the fact that freedom was now at hand. But 100 years later, the, the Negro is still not free. And 100 years later, um, the life of the Negro is still sadly crippled by the um, manacles of, of segregation and the chains of discrimination. 100 years later, the Negro lives on a lonely island of poverty in the midst of a vast ocean of material prosperity 100 years later. And so, you know, I think that this is, you know, a very poignant line that speaks to a lot of the challenges that, you know, um, as far as looking for you know, true racial parity. Um, it's it's something that we're still seeking. And, you know, I think that even though we don't have something as, as blatant as, you know, segregation, we don't have Jim Crow laws anymore. But in many ways, based on, you know, the research and, you know, of, of authors like Michelle Alexander with the new Jim Crow and other authors like Ibram X. Kendi, who wrote about um, the, the, just the future of, you know, just looking for true social justice and true racial justice um, in his um, How to Be an Anti-Racist. They talk about, you know, other systems like slavery being replaced by Jim Crow and then by Jim Crow being replaced by mass incarceration. So when you look at the levels of African-Americans who are facing, you know, state and federal prison, you know, time and, and serving, it, it has exponentially grown since the 1970s. And so, um, and if someone's interjecting and wanting to say something, feel free to. And if not, um, so we look at, you know, since the 1970s, there were a lot of civil rights that were won. And, you know, a lot of Lyndon Johnson's civil rights legislation really helped pave the way for, you know, just having a little bit more of this, you know, women got rights and uh, African Americans got rights that, you know, they didn't have to fight legal systems of separation, legal barriers to employment and to education. But you see that in some ways, in the 1970s, you see this exponential growth of people, as particularly African Americans, being in, incarcerated and having this sort of a stigma attached to you even after you've served your time of, you know, being a part of the criminal justice system and, you know, that it's something that hasn't necessarily served, you know, um, African Americans. Hello? Okay, uh -huh. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? I can hear you now. 
Okay, awesome, awesome. Feel free to interject if you did have a question. Okay. Um, but, you know, so this is something that, you know, in, in Michelle Alexander's book, you know, she she's sort of um, draws parallel. And also, if you um, have seen the Netflix documentary 13, it talks about how this is something that, you know, we're still seeking to, you know, really, you know, work towards achieving King's dream because one system was replaced by another. So I, I wanted to share, you know, just some of these statistics and mention Michelle Alexander's book as a means of, you know, just kind of showing that this work is still needing to be done and that there's there's a lot of that 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 mission that still needs to be filled. And so, you know, going back to Martin Luther King's speech, um, you know, even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, I still have a dream. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. And, you know, this is a dream that one day the nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed, that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. And so, you know, this is, this is the crux of, you know, what this speech, it, this speech means that, you know, the American dream, especially in the 1950s and 60s was, you know, it, we, we were the most prosperous nation. We had, you know, survived and, you know, thrived after World War II. And, you know, we were, people were living in homes. They were becoming first time homeowners and we were, we were expanding. We became, you know, a hegemon. We became a superpower. And that was something that everyone should have been able to, you know, share in that prosperity that came after World War II. But, um, you know, in the years, even after that, we're still fighting for that. Um, and so, you know, that's just kind of, you know, where the dream was and a little context on where, you know, it still is and how it still resonates in, you know, the lives of, of many in our multicultural communities. And, you know, as, you know, there's statistics out there that show that, you know, by the year 2050, America will be a majority minority um, nation, you know, where we'll have more, you know, uh, Asians, uh, Latinas, and Latinos, um, and then also African Americans who will be the majority um, of, of America's population. So, you know, it's, it's all about, you know, just making sure that men are being created equal and that, that we truly live up to our credo as a country that, you know, we're built on the fact that everyone can thrive. And so this kind of gets into the concept of dreamlining. And so what is dreamlining? It is, um, you know, just as we talk about dreams and realizing those dreams, um, personal development um, is, it's, it's about community development as well. So dreamlining is an exercise that, that's developed by author Tim Ferriss. And, you know, you can achieve your ideal dreams through working on some concepts that, you know, you maybe have always wanted to be or do, or it really helps you achieve, you know, things that you're really seeking to have. And, you know, if people don't make these sort of moves towards big, hairy, audacious goals, as they say, you know, um, then how can we ever really truly, you know, really make them happen? And if Martin Luther King hadn't ever spoke these things out, and you know, had this speech that that says this is this is we will get to the promised land, and this is you know our path forward for you know just really going out into the world and and just making changes you know on a systemic level. So you know, I think that there are a lot of um, undercurrents that you know with this concept of dreamlining um, developed in the in the book the Four Hour Work Week um, by Tim Ferriss and the speech that Martin Luther King you know, is, is most known for. So the focus is on thinking big, defining your steps, and then applying timelines to your dreams. And, you know, in the 1960s, there was another very famous speech. And, you know, it was John F. Kennedy's, like, we choose to go to the moon. And he put out this big, audacious goal. And that was something that, you know, you, you want to be able to set timelines. And he said, by the time this decade is out, we will go to the moon. And so, it's, it's applying some of these concepts um, that you can make sure that in five years, I'll be able to X, Y, and Z. So I'm just gonna get into an example here. 
And so according to um, Tim Ferriss's Dreamlining book, and if you have any questions, feel free to interject and ask. Um, Ernestine, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Tim Ferriss, I'm wondering, just in a little bit I saw it sounds, you had something about an investor there. So I'm wondering if his book is written from just a particular perspective or about a particular subject, just uh, finances, or was it written also to pertain to other areas? So, it's, you know, um, the book, it was written um, for all areas of life, but it just so happens that he is like really good at finances. And, you know, as I go through here, he'll talk about like, you know, your expenses and things that we're not really going to delve into too much here, but it's really more about putting strategy and timelines around things you want to achieve. And, you know, I think this is what he became most famous for. Um, and there, there's actually... He really expands on the concepts in, um, there's a book called Atomic Habits. And it really is about, you know, just really putting structure around what it is that you want to achieve and what are some of your big goals. And, you know, I wanted to, you know, bring these two concepts together with exploring the, you know, I have a dream speech because um, Tim Ferriss wants you to be very like concrete about what you want to achieve in five months in two months, in three weeks, I want to have, be, or do a, a particular thing. Um, and so I'm gonna get into some examples that he has here in just one moment, but I think the- but the You're the one who's bringing the two concepts together. He was writing it from the one concept. So he technically, to, to like answer your question directly, um, he wasn't just writing about this for financial reasons. It was more personal development. So like, if you want to, um, the example I'm gonna get into, I wanna learn Mandarin Chinese, or um, I want to have more conversations around systemic injustice or the social determinants of health and say that, you know, maybe minority women um, face barriers to, you know, um, childcare and or health problems that you know okay. maybe other people don't so it's really just exploring a concept and then you know breaking it down step by step so I'm combining the two concepts because you know it's just a unique spin on um you know just just the, the I have a dream because like what do you want to tangibly get to you know in in terms of you know just really achieving racial parity Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, just explaining uh, dreamlining a little bit more, um, you want to, you know, say to yourself, like in an X amount of time, I want to, I have a dream of maybe um, achieving a certain thing, I want to get certified um, as a plant based health, you know, um, trainer or something of that sort. And you put down, you know, what you would need to have to do that. Maybe you need to have time to take a course that's on Tuesdays at night. And maybe you need to be the person who's going to be better at multitasking. And you're going to need to do X thing. And so, you know, you really break it down into, you know, the cost um, of each thing and how you can actually implement it to the steps that you can do now. Or for example, say we want to, as a community, we want to have more conversations around, you know, say community policing. And, you know, what does that mean we would need to have? That means we would need to have a conversation with, you know, our police chief on what's already going on. And what we would need to be is maybe a community that, and I'm going to let someone in here. Hello. Welcome, welcome. Um, this is the Envisioning Community Dream. Can you hear me? Can you for it? Yes. Welcome and thank you so much for joining us. And um, just out of curiosity, did you join via the um, Biden in, uh, Envisioning Community Dreams um, inaugural day of service? Yes. Okay. Uh, did you have problems getting in? No. Oh, no, I was just late in coming in. Okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure there were no issues. But um, 
I'm Ernestine Lyons. I'm the host of this workshop, and um, I, I just kind of wanted to um, just go back for a half a second and mention that this is a workshop that is um, a kind of like unique concept of combining um, looking at the Martin Luther King, I have a dream speech and, you know, then com uh, pairing it with the concepts from the four hour work week by Tim Ferriss, which is um, one of them being dreamlining um, to to say what dreams you want to get to, um, especially when it comes to social justice or community. Um, what are some of the dreams that you see for yourself and how you can have agency in making them happen. Okay, so. And if you want to introduce yourself, feel free to and um, tell us where you're from. Um, and if you're from Harper Woods, and if you're not, that's fine too. I'm Doreen, I'm from West Bloomfield. Okay, all right. So I'm just going to delve right in. And I'll also send you a um, you know, copy of the recording of what we've gone over so far. Um, okay, so um, the after you've kind of identified what you want to have be or do and you know what that's going to mean for you you want to spell out some of the steps that you can take now as of like right now for example um going back to one of the examples i used earlier which was if you want to have more conversations around community health what steps can you have now maybe um say you want to take five residents with you to start walking and maybe it's socially distanced maybe you guys wear masks and you walk at the high school track and you know those are the steps you can do now because maybe next weekend you start or wednesday you start you know taking that step and then tomorrow you buy new new gym shoes because you think community health is important or you talk to maybe your local leaders about how you can maybe implement a community gardening sort of initiative or encourage people to eat healthier encourage people to possibly go vegan um and then the day after and so it just keeps you you know it keeps your goals right in front of you um, and it, it's really a great way for you to um, have that sense of, okay, well, I've already built towards this and I'll keep doing this and I'll keep revisiting this. And, you know, in a couple of months, I'll be to whatever the goal is. So I'm going to get into some examples. And um, so the four hour work week here is the cover of the book. And um, Timothy Ferris um, has done actually a really good job of building on concepts based on, you know, how you can, you know, just really delve into, you know, having goals, setting intentions, and then following through. So, um, as I mentioned, the dream of having, the dream of being, and so you want to have more um, proactive citizens in your community, and you want to be um, a person who steps up and speaks out for, you know, marginalized people, um, or you want to do, you know, maybe more opportunity, you want to do something that has to do with, you know, just having more of these tough conversations, or you want to be more active in creating some system that doesn't already exist um, in wherever it is that you serve. And I think this is something that, you know, Dr. King wants us, wanted us all to, you know, continue to be the people who are going to push forward because, you know, at the end of the, you know, I have a dream speech. Um, he mentions that I may not get there with you to the promised land, but, you know, together we can work towards that dream. So here are um, some of the things as far as like, you know, for, for your dream lining, you want to, you know, say every month or every six months or, you know, whatever your timeline you feel that is actually, you know, attainable. Um, and, you know, for those of you who are also into personal and professional development, there's something called SMART goals. And um, the SMART is an acronym for, you know, um, specific, measurable, attainable, time bound and relevant. Um, and I just said the last two out of order. But um, it's really putting, you know, just, just that, that, that conceptual, you know, this is what I can do, it's actionable. And that's the whole point of this workshop is to, you know, at the end of it, to set actionable goals for what we want to see in our own communities um, as far as, you know, racial parity, social justice, and, you know, just, just making better communities. So it's a brainstorming and workshop session and, you know, you can really put your own timelines around how you dreamline. Um, but 
So having, being, and doing, that's step two, three, and four. So for example, you identify the things you dream of having, including, but not limited to material wants. If you want you know, to have, to be a better neighbor or have the best yard or to, you know, have, you know, the, the best reputation for being that person that people go to or have the knowledge and, you know, or it can be material things as examples are here, like house, car, clothes. Um, and then being, being, um, you know, you can have a list of jobs or op occupations um, that you dream of being um, or things that maybe you want to, we talk about community health. Maybe you want to be a better vegetarian cook or just do home cooking in general better. Um, or, you know, you want to be fluent in Chinese. I know that's particularly a goal for me. Um, you know, I, I spent several years in China learning Chinese. Um, so, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, an example of being, you know, and then also the last one, which is doing, um, and it's things that you have a dream of doing or experiencing. Um, for example, you want to visit Thailand or trace your roots overseas or, you know, just, just you know, they say ostrich race, uh, racing ostriches here, um, which is kind of out there, but it's like, you can't have a big, hairy, audacious goal without having a, you know, just, just a, a map or a way to get there. And you have to be able to, you know, kind of have those steps that, you know, can help you to get there. So it's really just framing um, what your, your, your goals and your, you know, desires are and your dreams and just really spelling them out in detail with as much detail as possible to really make them happen. Um, and, you know, so some of these other things are, you know, in the last slide, we talked about, um, you know, just the costs and really breaking down, you know, what it what it'll take to have a steps now, tomorrow and the day after and continuing on with these goals. So um, steps five through eight really kind of help you to, you know, realize like, okay, well, if I can do this, this is actually tangible, um, then this is how I can make it something that's implementable. So I'll pause there for any questions or any comments, and then we'll start to get into, okay, the workshops. Okay, so now, um, now that we've kind of brought together two uh, concepts that are, you know, not necessarily related, but, you know, I think that they are helpful to applying the, you know, I have a dream speech to real world, you know, just us having, feeling like we have agency to, to really fight for and continue fighting for, um, you know, just systemic change and to be better people and to make our world better because I think 2020, and you know the actions with the capital insurrection of 2021 have really showed us that you know America does need to take a deep introspective look inwards. Because, uh, go back. Because you know Dr. King he envisioned a vision of a multicultural society, and you know he presented a vision of you know economic equality because economic just justice is social justice, and you know he presented this vision of a political struggle that is nonviolent. And, you know, that is something that's more strategic and you, you actually have to put some planning into things. You know, when the civil rights movement that was led by Dr. King and many others, you know, they, they weren't just saying, what do we want? Justice, we want it now and that's it. It was more, let's, let's lead the, you know, bus boycotts. And, you know, no matter how hard it gets, we have a plan. And we said that in a few months or a year or however long it takes, we are gonna have the buses desegregated. And so, you know, this is something that, you know, you don't necessarily see with a lot of movements. And I think that personally, uh, the Black Lives Matter movement maybe didn't pick up as much steam um, when you first started hearing that mantra um, circa 2015, because there was no coordinated plan. There were many different, you know, uh, just folks who said Black Lives Matter, and there were people who were, you know, leading things here and leading things there, but there was nothing that was coordinated that said, these are the five goals we want to reach. And I think that's really important to be able to have that planning, have that, that goal setting and having intentions that you know, you're sharing with other people so that you can all get to them together. So you know, that goes back to you know, how relevant 
Dr. King's speech is today. And so, you know, these are things that we can all try to live by and strive for today. And, you know, what's going on in the United States that we witnessed on January 6th, you know, it has to do with a backlash to the fact that, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there's a, a statistic that says by 2050, we're going to be a majority minority nation. And, you know, it's, the world is changing, America's changing. And it's not just, you know, a lot of my friends and colleagues overseas have, you know, noticed that there's, you know, it's, it's becoming more multicultural, like in Europe and, you know, in Asia and all over the world. So, you know, we're, we're becoming an intertwined world and we're more interconnected and a more multicultural world. And I think that's really, you know, one of the trajectories of history and, uh, you know, there's no going back. And this is, this is a quote from an article that I thought was really relevant from the New York Times that, you know, um, these, these, these concepts, they underlie everything and they underscore like everything that has been going on, you know, in 2020. And, you know, I do think that 2020 was definitely a challenging year, not just because of, you know, the social justice movements, but the coronavirus really uh, writ large the struggles that are, are endemic to, to, to this country as far as healthcare. And there are so many elements that, you know, we haven't really been looking at and, and just broken aspects of our system that, you know, we, we have the power to change, but we get apathetic and we, we don't necessarily think we have the power to plan for a change or to make a plan to work towards changing and having it be coordinated, having it be something that's shared. So, um, you know, it's just a just and equal world, um, no matter what our race is, is something we should be striving for. And, you know, just my personal thoughts, I think the insurrection happened because certain voices feel that they aren't being heard. And that's a problem too. So, with that being said, those are the concepts that um, I wanted to present in this workshop. Um, it, it ranged the gamut from, um, oh, we have Councilwoman Williams joining us. Hello. As you get connected, hello, Councilwoman Williams. Thank you for joining us in the dreamlining activity um, or envisioning community dreams, I should say. And um, I will get you caught up in just one moment, but we are uh, breaking into the workshop and sharing our ideas. Um, and, you know, just, I encourage you all to, you know, feel that you can, you know, start to plan here and talk about concepts around, you know, social justice or what you want to see change um, in your community. And then I have these prompts here, um, you know, so as far as we'll have some action items to walk away with using, you know, some of this, this planning that Tim Ferriss sort of um, outlines in the four hour work week with dreamlining. So in what ways have Dr. King's dreams not been realized? And, you know, what ways have they been realized? And, you know, what are some ways that we can be active participants in, in continuing the dream? So um, I'm going to stop the recording so that we can kind of delve into a little bit more um, conversation. Um, and things that we want to see change in our own communities or what, what we want, what we liked about maybe the way things were before. And, you know, what are some ways that we can envision and plan for a brighter, more united future? Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and stop sharing just for a moment here. And welcome. Uh, Regina Williams, hello. I, I wonder if this is the same Regina Williams that is a councilwoman in the city of Harper Woods. Uh, I'll let you introduce yourself if you are, and if you're not, you can still introduce yourself. <laughs> hello, Councilwoman Lyons. This is uh, Councilwoman Williams. <laughs> hello, hello. Um, Okay, so we, we went over, um, you know, the uh, I have a dream speech, or at least some of the more um, famous lines that call for, you know, folks to feel that they have, you know, agency and autonomy to, to step up and to, you know, be that person who advocates for, you know, just, just moving the needle forward when it comes to equality and racial parity. 
Um, and we combined another concept from the world of personal development and um, professional development, um, which was Tim Ferriss's book, um, The Four Hour Work Week. Um, and in that, he uh, introduces a concept called dreamlining. And it's where you get very specific and very intentional with your goals. Um, and you, what do you want to imagine um, yourself or your community being, doing, or having? So um, I do have the recording that I can send to you, but um, we do want to now um, use the rest of this time um, for you know just just workshopping on you know things that we want to see in our communities and it, even for ourselves. Um, and I like that this these concepts are often um, revisited in January because New Year's resolutions and goals are um, ways that we can keep at the forefront of our own strategies and being you know very intentional and strategic about you know how we plan for the rest of the year. So um, I'll pull up on the screen here, just some of the concepts from the four hour work week. And um, I, if you guys wanna just talk about thoughts on um, the concepts presented or you know, just feel free to, because this is very informal and we wanna hear from all of you. So I was just thinking, um, you know, while we are, romantically connected to the I have a dream speech. A more interesting point where Dr. King was at was his last book, which was, where do we go from here? Chaos or community. Right. Now that book answers a whole lot of questions and, and, and lays on the table things that yet need to be addressed because certainly the dream has not been realized, it's been more deferred. So when we talk about breaking this, this particular moment that we're in right now, this workshop, and we're, we're kind of like defining it more to a personal goal and aspiration, what's still on the table is where does we as a nation go from here? And that question is still on the table. So if, if no one has had a chance to read that particular book, it would it would bring you a clear point of reference on what needs to happen for America to go forward and to heal. Because we're in a troubling times. I mean, seriously troubling times. Not to mention COVID, but the the social unrest uh, is not over with the transition that's going to happen on Wednesday, and everybody has been pointing that out. But what's the way forward? And I think if, if more people would read that book that Dr. King last wrote, where do we go from here? It will answer a lot of questions. Thank you for that, Beverly. And um, you know, um, and this is we have Beverly Kendall Walker for for Dorrit and um for um Miss Williams, um, just to let you know she's on the the, the call with us. And uh, we're very excited to have you here. But and I think that that is why I kind of mentioned, you know, chaos or community, because, you know, we do have the power to, you know, set those same kind of personal goals that we set for ourselves, you know, we can set those for our community. And, you know, we can really, you know, like you said, you know, ask those hard questions about where do we go from here. And I even want to open up the floor for a discussion on what do you guys personally think is going to happen as you know we transition into a new administration you know and do you think there there'll be more you know just this sort of dissonance for some folks who you know really felt a particular way and felt that they were you know had their backs up against the wall and they had to storm the capitol you know um so what are some of the thoughts around you know just the future that would be great. Thank you so much. But this has been great. Thank you so much. Okay. And with that, so uh, we're, we're going to work, uh, walk, wrap, wrap up. I can't speak. Jeez. With that, we're going to wrap up the um, Envisioning Community Dreams workshop, which explored the Martin Luther King, I Have a Dream speech with, uh, and then combining that with some of the concepts of Tim Ferriss's um, The Four Hour Work Week book, um, particularly the dreamlining activities. Um, and we had a discussion, a robust discussion on how to continue uh, the dream and how to really fight for um, economic, social, and racial justice 
um, by setting goals and being intention, intentional about what vision we want for not only ourselves, but our communities. And so I wanna thank you for, you know, everyone who joined in live and for, um, I'm gonna also share the, the link out here um, so that, you know, folks who couldn't participate could also, you know, have a little bit of um, insight into how to envision better for your community. All right, so happy Martin Luther King Day, everybody. Same to you. All right, bye-bye.